everybody. I see Bob here. <laughs> I see I see Dean Harrington here. Hi Dean. Hi Bob. Yes, he's Dean says, Congrats, Grandpa. Thank you very much. Hello, Dwayne. I see you. Well, it's good to see you all. Um, and if anybody else is here, you can put your name or, or say hello, that kind of thing. Write something in the chat. That always helps everybody. <coughs> and you can just write as much as you want. I'll just ignore whatever is not uh, mm -hmm. relevant to what I'm doing here. Thank you for coming today. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar and Keys. And I haven't done anything with keys for quite a bit. I need to do something for with keys. Most of you are guitar players, right? Uh, if you're interested in keyboard, piano, that kind of thing, let me know in the chat and I will do something with keys. I really have a lot of stuff that I want to do, but I've just been um, distracted just with the guitar lately. I do have a gig on Saturday. We're going to talk a little bit about what I do to prepare for a gig and what you can do to prepare for a gig. And also, we're going to talk a little bit about helpful tips to guitar players, to new guitar players, and that kind of thing. I got a message from Deborah. Hello, Deborah. I hope you're out there somewhere. Here we go. Dwayne says, hi, Bob. I try, Hal. It's good to see you. All right, so I've got a, uh, like I said, I got a gig on Saturday, and I've been preparing for it. I've got a book right here with, uh, I don't know how many songs is in it, more than 20, I think. And this is a, going to be a gig where we're going to be at a farmer's market and also at a celebration. It's the uh, Constitution Week for anybody who understands about that. Constitution Week, the declaration, not the declaration, excuse me, the U.S. Constitution was signed on the 17th of September. Today is the 21st. The celebration goes through the 23rd. So what we're doing is uh, I'm going to be playing at this uh, gig Anyway, I'm going to be setting up, and there's going to be a bunch of classic cars there, and I'm going to be near the classic cars, and we're going to be playing music to attract people over to see the cars and to read uh, materials about Constitution Week and, and what that means. So what I'm doing here is I have a whole bunch of paper in a notebook, and I love to do it this way because, you know, technology fails sometimes. I don't know if you know this, but where's my phone? It's in my pocket. You know what? I, th I think I'm going to turn it off because sometimes it interferes with things. Let's see here. Yeah, let's just put it on, on mode, on, what do you call it? Airplane mode. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes my phone freaks out. Does yours do that? So what I have to do is I have to... Uh, restart my computer or, you know, restart my phone and that kind of thing. And so I don't want to have my all of my music on an iPad in case my battery goes out or something happens or I drop it or whatever. I love paper. It's fantastic. So I just have a notebook. I set it up on a stand. I put clips on it so that it doesn't blow away if there's any wind and that kind of thing. That's the way we do it. It's always worked for me and there's never any problem with technology. So I don't have, you know, there's no glare on the screen and that kind of thing, so no problem. And I put it into, here, let me get something out for you. So my lead sheets, which are in my book, and my book in, in the description of this, you can find a book, it's got 380 something pages now. Got a whole bunch of songs in there, over 115 songs. And so this is a lead sheet. This one is actually How Sweet It Is. James Taylor did this one. How sweet. How sweet it is to be loved by you. You know that song? It's a great song. So anyway, you know, that's up there. And I put it in 14-point type so I can see it at a distance. No problem there. I don't really need glasses. Uh, it would help for long distance and stuff like that, but um, I've got pretty good eyes, except really, really close. I need to have some readers for that. 
but that's kind of normal for uh, people who are getting older. Anyway, I'm going to go through this a little bit. And also, you know, Deborah was having some trouble. She was saying that she went on vacation mm. and her calluses fell off on her fingers, you know. They just kind of fell off, and now she's got no calluses, and so she's got to do something about that. Say hi, Deborah, if you're around. And anybody else, put it in the chat. Give me a thumbs up, by the way, if you like what I do. And subscribe to this channel if you want more videos like this. So one of the things that are really, really important for a guitar is that it's set up properly. And what I'm talking about is, when I'm talking about the setup, I'm talking about the action, and the action means that the the strings are close to the neck, or not too far away from the neck. Some people like the strings to be farther away. That's okay. It's a little harder to play, though. Turn that down for a second. So I like to have the strings kind of close. I'm not a really aggressive player. You've seen me play, right? I don't call that being really aggressive. And I try to get the strings close here at the nut. They're pretty close. And then the truss rod is adjusted so that the neck is pretty straight. Might have a little bit of a dip in it, just a little teeny bit. But if your strings are too far away from your neck, you're going to have a hard time playing. My first guitar was a Stella. Do you know what a Stella is? Look it up. They're horrible guitars. I don't know where my mom and dad got it. They gave it to me and it was, it had strings that were way off the neck and it was really hard to play. A friend of my dad said, you need to get a guitar that has a radius on it. He didn't call it that, but he talked about a curvy neck, you know, a little bit of a curve in the neck and one that can be adjusted and that kind of thing. And so when I was about 14, I had a job and I saved up my money and I bought a guitar, uh, an Epiphone guitar with a case, not this one, sorry. I don't have that one anymore. I sold it to a friend of mine. But uh, now I kind of regret it. <laughs> don't, don't sell your gear, okay? So I like to have my guitar set up. I love 11s on my acoustic guitar. What that means is the E string, the high E string, is 11 one thousandths of an inch thick, 0 0.011. And the top one is a 52. I like Diodario strings. I don't really like elixirs with the nano webs. I don't really like those. Those tend to peel off and that kind of thing after a while, and they don't last that long. They last a little longer than these strings. These strings, for me, if I'm really playing hard and a lot, they'll last a few days. The nano webs will last me another day or two longer, and then. Uh, <laughs> Dwayne says, "Don't sell your gear." Tell that to my wife. Yeah, yeah. Dwayne, have her watch my video, okay? Yeah. Oh, by the way, Dwayne, uh, when you go into that store, that guitar shop, the next one, you know what? Your wife's going to call and she says, you can get it if you want it. She'll say that. Okay, so what I do, when I'm, pr when I'm practicing for a gig, and I've got like a bunch of songs in here, and how long does it take to play... Let's say I've got 22 songs. Where's my phone? Why do I want my phone? Because I want my calculator. I want to get it out and look at it. Let's see here. So if I have 22 songs and I'm playing them for, let's say, an average of three minutes a piece, that's 66 minutes, right, of playing time. But you know that some songs are longer and some songs are shorter. Well, and plus, if I put any time at all between these songs, it's going to take me an hour and a half. And, and plus, if I start playing and I mess up, this is It Don't Matter to Me by Brad. the song, right? So a lot of times what I'll do is I will open up my book and I will start playing and I'll play the first verse and then uh, 
I'll play another section like a bridge. Right, this part right here. A lot of people have an ego hang up because they want to be the only one. How many came before? It really doesn't matter just as long as you're the last. If I don't sing the whole song, then they won't take uh, my my monetization away. So that's why I'm not singing the whole song. Hi, Deborah. You're here. Welcome. Just talked a little bit about strings and that kind of thing you should do. All right, I turn the page. I've got capo on third fret. So this is how I go through and practice for my gig. <coughs> so here's, I've got capo on third fret. That's not tight enough, right? I love capos that have an adjustment screw on them like this one. This is a shove capo, right? I'm gonna tighten it down just a little bit more. Then what I do is I pull my strings like this. Pull, 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 pull. Dirk asks me, how do you have specific times for being here? Good question, Dirk. Best from Dortmund in Germany. <laughs> Fantastic. Dirk, I love it that you're here. Thank you very much. I usually have done a live stream at 12 o'clock my time, which is about 8 o'clock your time in Germany, I believe. And uh, bit I know this because I talk to people in the Netherlands and in Germany all the time. My son was just actually over in uh, Berlin, I think it was, just this last week, doing some work over there. <coughs> so I was thinking about changing the time to 9 o'clock a.m. on Saturday. And tell me, for those of you who are in here, tell me if you like that idea or not. Now, 9 o'clock would be 8 o'clock a.m. in California. It would be, for you, Deborah, it would be 10 o'clock. For Bob, it would be 11 o'clock. For Dean, it would be 9 o'clock. For you, Dirk, it would be 4 o'clock, no, 5 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. So just tell me, you know, with that, I don't know where you are, Dwayne. I don't remember what... Uh, what city, what state, what country you're in. Um, so just put that down there and let's see what it is. So that's what it would be. And you can, when you click on the link, when I send out, now if you're on my email, let's, let's back up. <laughs> if you're on my email list, you'll get a link. You can click on it. You can see when I start. It'll tell you your local time. Uh, Deborah Noel, 10 a.m. works for me. Okay, so the only problem, Dean says it works for me, great. The only problem is this Saturday, I'm going to be starting my gig around 10 o'clock. As long as no big college football games are on at noon, Eastern Daylight Time. Well, yeah, but it'll be 11 o'clock uh, your time, Bob. And so it's not 12 o'clock. And besides, if it happens to coincide with a baseball game, you just get your phone out and watch, you know, while you're watching the, the beginning of the game, you can do my uh, live stream on your phone at the same time. Okay, pregame, right, right. Oh, well, okay. You guys are just big base uh, football fans, aren't you? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna start that, not this Saturday, but I'm going to start it probably a week from Saturday because I don't have a gig that day. All right, so here's one, it's called Give Me Love. That doesn't sound right to me because it's uh, that chord just doesn't sound quite right. So what I do is I put my tuner on here. Now remember I pulled my strings. That one's a little high. Now I've had these strings on for a little while. And since I have a gig on Saturday, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the strings today. So I'll be ready for Saturday. Yeah, because they're not exactly perfect. So I need them to be perfect for the gig. So that's what I'm going to do. Do you know this one? Give me light. That's a 
little high for my voice. I'm going to go down. Maybe I'll just open it up because my voice isn't working as well today. How's that sound? Give me love, give me love, give me peace on earth. Give me light, give me life, keep me doo doo doo. Yes, that sounds a lot better in my voice. Yeah, that sounds great. So I'll, I'll go through that, and then there's the part that goes. I go through that? Done. Okay. Michelle. Oh, I love this one. Let's see. How does this one go? Remember I did this just a few weeks ago, Michelle? So I'm having a little trouble remembering how this goes. I can do it with a pick or I can do it with my fingers. There's a C-sharp diminished chord. I couldn't remember if it was this one, that one, that one is this one. Or I could do the C-sharp diminished chord here. So I'll go through these songs really quick and just maybe do a verse and a chorus, go to the next song. <coughs> oh, this one is for kids. I love this one. It's called the Lava Song. Do you know that one? A long, long time ago, there was a volcano Living all alone in the middle of the sea. When I play that, kids in second grade, third grade, fourth grade, they're like, oh yeah, I know that song. I've seen that Disney short. Lava. Oh, here comes the sun. It's in my book. Levi's going to play bass for me. He's going to do the arrangement that they did. He's going to play the bass part that they did on the concert for George. He loves that one. Pull the strings and you put the capo on. Listen to it. That's what I do before I actually tune it. <laughs> Dean Harrington. Harrington is... Uh, saying, Dirk, ich habe 1972. He's telling him where he was in Germany. I don't, I don't speak German, so I don't really know what that is. How sweet it is. Take the capo off. Listen to it. Pretty good. How sweet it is to be loved by you. It is to be loved by you. Do -do 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 -do. Right, all these songs are in my book. <coughs> so a lot of times the beginning of the song is really important because if I can't remember how it goes. <laughs> I'll just do that much. Go, okay, I got it. I give her all my love. I do that one in E minor instead of F sharp minor like they do in the Beatles because it's lower and it's better for my voice. How about this one? Like 
like a night in the forest have songs under your belt like this if you can only play parts of songs you need to start working on some songs I like this one too that's one of the reasons why I practice a little bit So I'm checking tempo. But I you know what? That's really low. I've got a note on here. Capo second fret. You know why? Because Elvis did it in the key of D. <laughs> Wise men say. Hear that? Just the capo? I usually get this all done before I'm... sounds better. Right? Okay. Let's go to the next one. Oh, Fields of Gold by Sting. Now this one has capo second fret. really important that you get that right but you know what it's a little I think I'll lower it just a little bit to a minor you'll remember me when the west wind moves upon the fields of Bali this part that comes up as we walk in fields of gold that part and it goes that little melody that comes in there I've been working on that and it's kind of difficult to do she, so she took her love for to gaze a while upon the field And then that bridge. I never made promises lightly, and there have been some that I've broken. Yeah, All right, good. Moving on. Dwayne, I know 100 parts, but rarely play full songs. Sadly, you need to work. You need to learn some songs. <clears throat> Tell you what, I'll give you a Dwayne. I'll give you a an idea of what you can do. What I would do, and yes, uh, <laughs> Dean and Dean and uh, Dirk are having a little conversation. That's great. Keep going, guys. No problem. <clears throat> All right, Dwayne. This is what you do. Get, well, you can start small. Learn three songs, just right straight out and uh, all the way through. And work up to 17 songs. Why 17? Because in, uh, if you play 17 songs, well, just, just work up to 17. But start small. Start with one, two, three, and review them once you learn them. Here's one I really like. See here, hold on. C 
See, I just need this review right here. Do you know what song this is? Secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? Now, a lot of times I'll have a book out in front of me to remind me what the words are, because right there I, I, I what are the words? <clears throat> and these lead sheets, I do have these things mostly memorized, but they're just to get my brain. I'm yours, Jason Mraz. Well, you done done me, you bet I felt it. Tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. All you got to do is go through a little bit of the song, except if you've got, now this one has a bridge. in C that's a ukulele version and let's see I've got it in D I like it in D remember I did a lot not too long ago in D book I have like three or four different keys to fit your voice so Deborah you can find one to fit your voice rainbow connection you know this one this is cool I've got this says capo second fret it's probably in the key of A I'm playing it in the key of G now once I have this capo adjusted for third or second fret or something like that I don't have to Sounds pretty good, so I'll go with it. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, right? song. I'm going to do this one without a pick and then we'll be done. Key of D. Do you know this song? play it very much. It's a G6. There it is. And the way you look tonight. Okay, C. 
So that G6, I need some help on that. Now, on my, in my book, I actually have it written out here on the right-hand side of the lyric sheet with the chords. <clears throat> and it shows you the G6, how to play it. And that's one that I don't play very often because I don't play a lot of jazz. So I'll go back and forth. And just go over that. I'll go back to that chord. I was talking to, uh, I think I was talking to Deborah this morning. And I was talking to her about how you work on chords. So I would go. also do with a pick. So I need to go back and forth. I need to work on that G6 before this gig on Saturday. So I will do that. All right. Thank you for being here. Any questions that I need to answer? Deborah, I love the music of Hallelujah. Do you have a tutorial on that? You don't have to look it up, Deborah. Look it up. Do a search on my uh, channel. Go to my my channel, the little, you know, whatever it is, the search thing. Click in there, put hallelujah in, and it'll come right up. I might have one. I just don't remember right now. I've got over 800 videos, 800 and something. I don't know what it is. I don't remember if I did hallelujah or not. If I didn't, remind me, Deborah, and I will do it really soon. All right, thank you for being here. We love you guys. Um, a lot of times what I'll do as I'm going out here, I will, I'm going to put on my ditto looper. And show you how I use it. I'll just do stuff like that just to find out where do I play a lead? How do I improvise on that? All right. Thanks for being here. We'll do after live. Okay. Come and see me, Deborah, at uh, Rock Out Loud. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, come and see me. Let's hang out. Talk to you later. Bye.